subscribe to James the Sheriff Dixon, you motherfuckers. Yeah, all right, I'm back with fun times with the sheriff, with my with my old friend here, Jay. You want to say hello? Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me back on Fun Times with the Sheriff. This is like take two. Yep. In, the, <laughs> in one season. Oh wow! In one season. So it takes two in one season. All right. <laughs> Right. Thank you for having me once again, man. Appreciate yeah. it. So today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, sci-fi movies in the uh, film industry. Yes, yes, indeed. The sci-fi movies in the film industry. What makes reality mixed in with Hollywood, how that whole marriage kind of comes into play. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Definitely pretty cool. Um, I think that uh, nowadays, especially... Um, People are clamoring for, and they are, and movie makers are doing more stuff that is like based upon reality of science, uh, uh, scientific facts. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's always a good thing. It's always a good thing. So, it's a. Uh, I, I tease some people all the time, like you know, it's like nerds have their day in the sun, but you know, I, I think everyone has a little bit of nerd in them anyway. So, I, I, I'm I agree not. With that too, yeah. Everybody has their something. Exactly. So that's what you get with these sci-fi movies. It was just pretty awesome, I think, because I mean, everyone has their own nerd tendencies, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. We should talk about Star Wars first, since we were just, yes. we were just talking about that, and I, I think that was one of the like things that kick-started the whole trend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th there were others, you know, but that definitely kicked the door open, so that was like 77 I think the yeah. first Star Wars so right, right before like I think like uh, Space Odyssey yep 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 Space Odyssey things like that but what made Star Wars so cool was a couple of things I mean you had the robots and like George Lucas was he, he, I heard him say and I've read that he's a big fan of dog fights like with airplanes like mm -hmm. you know, planes shooting at each other and stuff like that um, but also a lot of people don't know what made it so in your face is the marketing because at that time Lucas wanted the marketing rights to all of his creatures and creations and stuff like that. So that's how you got the, the you know, the, the glasses at Burger King, the, toys. the Star Wars lunchbox and all that. And the toys, the, the figures are the, the, a big thing. I know that. Exactly. So he knew what was going on. He knew there was a market for toys. It was very ingenious of him. And that kind of made it so it was relevant because kids wanted to, you know, the Millennium Falcon, the Darth Vader. I mean, I have a few toys, and I, you know. I still, so, yeah. I sell some mine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some in my uh, dad's attic somewhere, but yeah, sure. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's, that's what really kind of, the marketing aspect, because at that time, um, like I said, he was the only one that said he wanted the rights. I mean, previously, I think, uh, Production companies would have the rights to those movies, and they, you know, 50 cut, yeah, 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 yeah. But he was like, no, I want all that marketing. So that really, you know, aside from you didn't have to know, you know, what the movie was about to know what, you know, who Luke Skywalker was, C three PO, you know, exactly, Darth Vader. I mean, you knew just because of marketing, you didn't have to see the movie, which is pretty cool. So, but yeah, and then I guess it was also cool for me from a professional standpoint to work with Mark Hamill on a movie called Virtually Heroes several years later. So he's the nicest guy in the world. Very nice. Very down to earth. So mm -hmm. definitely, definitely a good time. Definitely a good time. So with, um, with the, with the yeah. multiple sequel thing, this led me to see the, the last three of them in theaters. With the same with watching it with my mom who saw all, all of them in the, uh, the theaters. The Star Wars? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now, let me ask you if you've seen the Lucas, you know, his versions, and you've seen the J.J. Yeah, Abrams. I've seen uh, both, yeah. So what's your what's your take? Are you like one or the other? Like, you... I, I'm like an all fan of, like, I like I like everything, like the TV shows. I'm like not divided like a lot of people are. Okay, okay. I can dig it, I can dig it. So, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, on top of that, you've had the video games over the years, and you will have the video games for it. <laughs> for eternity. I know one of my favorite video games was the, uh, the Force Unleashed. The yeah, Force. yeah, yeah. The video games have always been pretty cool uh, to play, even when they had them for, like, a Atari. I think they had them for Atari, I believe. But, 
Yeah, so, um, but yeah, just the whole marketing thing that really blew the, the, the lid off the handle for other kind of sci-fi movies to come on, like, do their things. Yeah, like the aliens and the predator. Like, yeah, exactly, like aliens and predator. Um, plus the alien, because it was still around the same time. We're still talking in the seventies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think for Alien, what was so unique about that is you had a female lead character, which is kind of unheard of. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, it was rare. It was rare, but you know, for for a movie to be a franchise, and you know, I know, and I'm all for equal opportunity filmmaking things like that. But um. Yes, to have Sigourney Weaver play the, the lead character and it to get the reception that it did and does to this day is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, and that too, I mean, you know, if you have, if you got a taste, you got the appetizer with Star Wars, and, you know, here's, here comes the main course a few years later with Aliens, so, <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty awesome, it's pretty awesome. And then, there, of course, they had like the spinoff, like, scenes from, Alien with like a space walls where yeah. <laughs> the alien pops through the gas stomach in the restaurant and stuff I wanna, like that. I want to talk about that scene because I know like they said the scene where the alien comes out of the guy's chest with, like nobody like on the set but, but like the director and like one other guy like apparently knew about it. <clears throat> so like everyone's like reactions and that was like for real like they were scared of it when it happened. Oh, oh yeah yeah and I'm sure he kept the director kept the proper sign and that a few people know what was going on so they could pull it off. I mean, it gets a more authentic reaction than, which, you know, if everyone knows what's going on. Which is, so, more, yeah. which is more hard to do, like, nowadays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's still kind of some kind of some, 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 some secrets, but yeah, it's not as, as it once was, but yeah, so they had that, had that thing bust through that guy's stomach. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, just some of the, the fact that I think with Alien as well, it was, you couldn't, you didn't have to know that it was sci-fi slash horror yeah. without seeing the alien. Like, just, the, you know, being heard and not seen was scary enough yeah, or like in, intrigued you enough. Just like the Jaws thing. Just yeah, exactly. And then, then seeing it every now and then. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, you know, as they made other sequels, they made the alien more kind of prevalent where well, you could get a clear glimpse of. But, yeah, I think that was great. That was ingenious. Like you said, that whole Jaws theory where, you know, it's better, you know, to hear about it than to see about it. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, but sci-fi is, uh, I think, uh, definitely a, a platform for um, for those who, who have nerdy tendencies or, or, or you know very smart and things like that. It's kind of their way to uh, shine in the sun, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with nerds and being smart. I like all that kind of stuff and to get off. And, I mean, I love reading it. Like, this is better than this guy. Like you were saying, everybody has like their own kind of thing they have. Yeah, exactly. They have their own little thing that, that they like, and it may not be what the majority of folks like. So, if sci-fi is one of those avenues where people can kind of stand up, and other people that wouldn't normally take notice do take notice and say, oh, wow, that is pretty nice. Mm-hmm. That is pretty cool. So, it's, it's a great medium. Um, but not only that, for that, but also just the real world implications, like a lot of things that are going on in society today, um, a lot of that stuff is getting up buzz, and what's cool about it is anyone can make a movie about it, it doesn't have to be a studio, it doesn't have to be a big name production company, just be a guy that's curious about, you know, um, I don't know, sand, or sand creatures, or whatever, you know, whatever the subject, you know, they're interested in, and you can really spark a whole buzz or find those who are interested, and they will check it out as well. You normally think there wouldn't be an audience for sand creatures, for example, or creatures from, you know, that live underneath the earth, or in the ocean, rather. So, yeah, but there it is, there it is. So, so then they're just, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say, do you want to talk a little bit about one of your favorite movies, and also mine? Oh, yeah, so I'll probably say one of my favorite sci-fis of all time is Terminator 2. Um, just because of the fact that even though it had the cool graphics at the time with the whole uh, liquidation and, you know, the guy, the T-1000 morphing through the head of bars in the jail and all those kind of mm-hmm. things that we see, um, but the, the story was still good, so. Yeah, and mine was the Revenge of the Sith, and that's because, was, <laughs> and that's because it was originally supposed to be the, the last of the Star Wars movies, but then 
Disney bought it, and we got the nine, seven, eight, and nine. So he tells me Disney's not done, so we gonna get that more from you the next nine years. They're coming out with one every single year. Yes, they are. Every other year, yeah. So I I don't know how certain people feel about that, but hey, whatever works. Disney knows that people will go see it, those diehard fans from way back in the day. Um, But it's just a matter of, hey, they they know the market, they know the audience is there, it's a built in audience. And they're just going for it. It was just cool. Nothing wrong with that. So, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, too, we mentioned the fact that we were talking about X-Files. Yeah, like, yeah. So, that's something. Like, the TV section, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that X-Files kind of came around, and people, and it was almost like the same thing. I'm like, I've never seen, I've seen a few episodes of the X-Files and such, but I never followed the characters. But it's just like Star Wars. You didn't let know the, you didn't have to know the story to know the I characters. Know like Mulder and Scully were in that they like went off and fought like aliens and monsters like every week. Right. Or you, you, or if you heard that Gary Fane music, you know that was Exiles, even though yeah. you might not have ever seen it. You know. So, um, but they, yeah, it's just a, kind of the TV thing, and then I think um, it's kind of funny. Uh, there was a, a movie, and then there was a TV show, Alien Nation, about the guys who were. Aliens, but they were also, you know, police officers and law enforcement. I know what you're talking about, yep. And they used to get drunk off of not like wine, but they got drunk off of foil milk, which is just like <laughs> their thing. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that that whole time and you know, in the nineties was it, uh, it really kind of opened that door wider to the sci-fi folks that you know couldn't get enough of the movies and stuff like that. And there were some, as I mentioned before, that like Alien Nation. And, you know, we even showed before that. But even still, it's like, okay, X-Files just kind of reinvented the wheel. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And yeah, Battlestar Galactica, too, right after that. Ah, yes, yeah, Battlestar Galactica. Um, the remake one, not the... I know there was an 80s one, too. But the, 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 yeah. the remake's my personal favorite. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, the Edward James Olmos. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, I mean... And, it's just that whole sci-fi niche, um, and, but it's all to me again just a niche audience of made up of different types of folks that like different types of things, and you kind of I don't want to say exposed, but you bring to the forefront certain things that people had no idea either existed or were not totally interested in. But the way you tell the story. It's all about the story yep. that will make people tune in. I mean, the, the, don't get me wrong, the, the visual effects are great. The explosions and fights and bombs and car cases and all that, that's awesome. But at the end of the day, even in sci-fi, you got to have that story because, you know, that's where it starts and ends. Everyone has to be different from the other, otherwise people will not really tune into it. Yeah, yeah, you got to have your own little niche to it, so... Uh, I think even kind of rewinding in time around that Star Wars time, there was a show I used to like back in the day called Buck Rogers. I mean, I used to love Buck Rogers, but it was a sci-fi thing, and, um, and it was a TV show. But, yeah, it was just like the storyline of the characters. You had the, the little mini robot. His name was uh, Twiggy or Twinkie. I can't remember. But he was voiced the same guy who voiced Bugs Bunny. was the same guy who voiced the robot on Buck Rogers, so Mel Blanc. So. But... I mean, the storylines are great, and as a kid, you get kind of pulled into them, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all about that story, so. Um, so you said you saw Contact the other day. Yes. Just now. Um, I brought this up before on my channel and in previous podcasts, but that's one of my favorite go-to alien slash uh, sci-fi movies. What, mm-hmm. what were your thoughts on that? I thought the contact was great. Great story, uh, many layers. Um, you had strong talent with Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey and the supporting cast, Ashley Bassett, uh, James Wood. So, well cast. I mean, great job. And they all are especially good at their craft. And they, you know, I think they pulled it off really well in terms of just uh, the storyline and things of that nature. I kind of felt a little bit that, and maybe this was by choice of the filmmaker, that they really persecuted Jodie Foster for her beliefs and what she thought. Okay. And I feel like she, I feel like that would have been well executed today what that happened in that movie would have happened now. You wanna say that again? I feel like that would have would have happened today what happened to Jodie Foster's character if a character like that were to do what she did in that movie now. Yeah, I mean, 
you stick to your guns, but they, I don't know, it seems like they came up a little too hard on her, but again, maybe that's just the whole kind of premise. Um, I think uh, from a director standpoint, I know this was directed by Robert Zemeckis, who directed Four Steps a few years earlier, so... Oh no, that was Roland Emmerich who did Independence Day. Yeah, yeah, but... We can talk about that after. Oh yeah, definitely. We can talk about Independence Day. Um, but, on contact. Yeah, but it was great. I mean, I, 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 it wasn't towards the end. I kind of figured, like, oh wow, this has got like I've seen this style before in terms of action and music, especially with the music. And then it turns out it was like I said, it was Robert Zemeckis, the same guy who did Forrest Gump. And at that time, you know, Forrest Gump had a lot of wide panning shots, and, um, yep. things of that nature, and the camera work was key to telling the story. Um, and the music uh, also, as in Forrest Gump, as it was in Contact, was very uh, dramatic. Or, you know, the music was almost a character within itself, which was awesome. I thought it was pretty cool. So, but yeah, yeah, um, I, I think a good job. I mean, a good movie. I'm glad you pointed it out to me. Um, this, that's why I think you're the sheriff, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorites. And I brought it up in the early episodes of the podcast. And yeah. it's just one of the things I like to go back to every so often. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it had a lot of stories to it, but it was a longer movie. But it was worth it because every kind of layer had a you know a, a space for it in the in the time frame or the timeline of the movie. It's long, so. but it's not like slow. That Correct. Slow kind right. Of long, like right. It doesn't lag. It doesn't lag, which is good. Like, it kept my attention, but I, I was uh, kept my attention. I totally enjoyed it. Um, I think that. Um, yeah, yeah, I lost my train of thought. But um, I like also too. I think the fact that they had a a, a great uh, a great amount of minorities in that movie as well. Like Angela Bassett was, you know, in the one of Bill Clinton's uh, executive assistants or whatever her role was, chief of staff or something. So that was pretty cool too. I think from a, a filmmaking standpoint, to have a lot of minorities in power that you know were in the film. So that, that was another point I was going to make, but. Uh, Kind of gives you mentioned now, um, like Independence Day. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're, we're, just talking about this, I couldn't believe I didn't think of, of this, which I normally always watch on the Fourth of July. It's like a tradition. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. of my favorite ones that just so happens to be about aliens and sci-fi and Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum and Will Smith. And it was a time, of, you know, in Will Smith's career where his. Uh, he was just taking it, up, wasn't he, run too? Yeah, and a lot of his releases would happen around that 4th of July-ish time because he was kicking, yeah, he was kicking butt in the box office. I mean, Independence Day was another big draw for him, so um, they used to call it jokingly like Big Willie Week, Big Willie Weekend, like 4th of July weekend. And after that, it was like I think it was Man Black, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so. Back to Independence Day, like I know the first one was way better than the second. Have you seen the second one? Yeah, I saw the second one. I saw the first one was cool. Um, uh, the second one, I, you know, I didn't too much care. It was okay, but, you know, the first one was all right. Um, and, you know, and they had a lot of, again, that was, Will Smith was sitting in stride and doing his thing. And they had a lot of press and hype behind it and stuff like that, which was pretty awesome. Um, but, yeah, it was, I don't know. The, the second one, I, they knew, again, it was a big blockbuster, so they want to cash in on the, built an audience and hey, let's go ahead and make a second one and they did that and mm-hmm. like you said, I think the first one is better than the second. So. To look back around to um, Men in Black, that's another... <laughs> yeah, Men in Black was an, another one where the first one was, you know, pretty decent, pretty cool and then they had the second and third one um, and I, I became a... I kind of stopped a, watching them after the third one. Was, that's the one with the time travel, isn't it? With, Maybe or whatnot. Is that someone who stopped acting, right? Yeah, that was the one where um, they were on the the right before the rocket launch. Uh, mm-hmm. Who was it? Josh Josh Brolin. That's, Brolin, that's but the last one I stopped watching because I think that's the last one they both did together. I think. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I'm trying to remember. So, but again, that was you know uh, Will Smith as his you know one of his times when he was just. Um, doing good things in Hollywood and making some good movies. I mean, he's, he's still a, a bankable star, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it was just really kind of 
you know, catching fire or was on fire. Um, they had like, I never met a black one. They had the cameo of Michael Jackson in there. Yeah, like, so, the, the M course, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. No, he was like Michael Jackson. Literally had a line. He uh, said, "I can play, I, I can play H and M." You know that type of thing. Oh, uh, so. yeah, he wanted to be like, yeah, in the movie, and they let him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but, um, but you know, it's that that sci-fi thing, and just getting you knowing that the audience is out there, and people will enjoy it. And if you got some bankable stars in in there with him and Tommy Lee Jones and. Um, the third one, I think, was uh, not Tommy, not Tommy Lee, but uh, Chris, Chris, Hems- Chris Hemsworth's uh, brother, I believe, was in the, the one after. Yeah, that. yep. I think so. So yeah, and they just kind of, you know, knew where they were going with the story. So I'll be, in terms of, uh, uh, we'll make something up right quick. <laughs> just in terms of knowing their, knowing the audience, just going back to that. But at the same time, you know, it's all about the story. All about yeah, I the remember story. I, I, I used to have one of those uh, neuralizer thing toys when the uh, <laughs> first one came out. Okay, I can dig it. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the mind eraser. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it was, yeah, him, uh, Josh Brolin, that's the guy who I was thinking of, who played Young Agent K. Uh, so. in, in the time travel one? Uh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. The time travel one, the third one. Yep. So. But yeah, 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 so sci-fi again. I mean, it's just about things you wouldn't normally notice, but when people bring it to the forefront, you'd be surprised. It kind of comes out the woodworks and say, "Oh wow, that's pretty cool. That's you know, pretty neat, unique." So definitely a niche market, but you know, it's it's something for everyone in the in the sci-fi world. I think. So, uh, to I mean, you, oh, go on. I'll I'll say my thoughts after. Oh, no, I was just gonna say. Nah, even still, like it doesn't have to be in space. It can be like. Uh, to me, like, the oceans and the world of water and stuff like that, I think they're, just as people say, there's life beyond, you know, what's here on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. That, that's why I like contact, because it yeah. answers your questions yeah. at the same time, it really doesn't answer those questions. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, there is. So, um, but you can say the same thing for, like, the ocean. There's a literally a whole other world of beings and stuff and, you know, in the Pacific Ocean or, or the waterways of, mm-hmm. you know, what, what's here on the Earth. So, you know, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there had been some movies about life underwater, but, you know, that's a whole other niche of sci-fi. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's for the picking. Water world. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Have Fun times with the sheriff. Have you, have you seen um, uh, Firefly? Which, I have not seen Firefly. No, I have not. We, we, well, we can like that's one of the ones that a lot of people talk about. What was canceled? Okay. But was like you know it was like canceled shortly, right? Okay, I did not know that. That that's I just bring that up to like loop it back to like a TV standard of it because um, that that's one of the shows that um, a bunch of people talk about. These of um, like forget the guy who's in it who's the main actor, but he, he's one of the more famous people because of that one six-episode season, six to nine-episode season that was canceled. Josh Whedon directed the show who went on to do The Avengers. Oh, um, hang on a second. Mm. So, you, you, uh, you're not, uh, Nathan Fillion, are you speaking Yeah, yeah, of? yeah, yeah, Nathan Fillion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, okay, and Gina Torres, yeah. all right, yeah, 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 okay, so, no, I've never seen it, I've never seen it, um, but, uh, yeah, okay, 2002, um, yeah, 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 um, but the, the sci-fi realm is pretty cool, have you seen, um, and if you haven't seen it already, it's called Fire in the Sky, Oh, no, is, that's that's on my list of things to, uh, to watch, I heard that's about, like, a, an actual, like, um, alien abduction. You're correct. It's supposed to be the one that the government acknowledges and things like that. And it's supposed to be the most authentic story of alien abduction to date that's like been out there. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool about some. Uh, the, uh, the guy some, that that says that that movie that got that movie made, he, he says he wants to like redo it because mm-hmm. he, there were some stuff in that movie that wasn't like exact, and he wants to make a modern day version of it, but like completely accurate. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'd be worth a reboot, if you will, or revisit it. But yeah, that was a, that was a good one. 
But yeah, that, that, that's like on my list of like things to watch since the mm. the government release it. UFOs are were are our thing now. Oh yes, they are. And I think, in my opinion, I didn't need the government to kind of say that. I, I always felt that there's life beyond the Milky Way galaxy that we live in, and even within this Milky Way galaxy. <laughs> so I, 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 I've, I've you know, always been a conspiracy theorist about that stuff, so I was kind of believed. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And even like not only just beyond planet Earth, but there are certain species on planet planet Earth that we haven't discovered yet. Like you know the Loch Ness monster and Bigfoot or Sasquatch, call it what you want, yeah. uh, or other you know uh, races of the not only the human race, but there are other races of creatures that are on this planet that just haven't been discovered. So, uh, oh, the, I just want to. Say one more time, the Battle Circle actually is great. Um, if you have not seen the entire thing, um, or not seen it at all, that was the show I liked. I loved before The Walking Dead was even out. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be sure to go ahead and watch the Edward James almost uh, version. I've seen the original one from back in the day, but yeah, do I was check it out. The, do you want to talk about the original one since that that's still sci-fi? Oh yeah, I mean we can. I I. I, I it's, I think, again, I, as a matter of fact, I was around the same line as the whole Buck Rogers type of thing. But mm -hmm. that was kind of like a big thing in terms of the TV show. And I think they had guest spots on there. Like every week, they would have, you know, the current actor or actress that was hot at the time. They would come on the show and play a bad guy or a good guy. They're like the hero um, or villain of the week. Right, exactly. So, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I remember that much. Like they had a different, you know, guest, guest starring such and such for this week. So. But, um, yeah, I have to check out the, the Edward James Olmos one. But, you know, that's the TV side of, you know, those that love sci-fi. Um, what would you say, I guess, now? I mean, there are a lot of choices. But in terms of sci-fi on television, what are your, some of your favorites there, um, Kira? Would the TV show Supernatural count? I would say so. so I would that, say that's so. That's, like, the only one. I, I don't really like any of the other shows on CW really that's the only show that i like okay that's supernatural and that season's coming to its end when it returns back to production this fall yeah 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 so um and this would be interesting how things kind of pan out when shooting resumes well, they, how they, they, already, kind of play. they already have like half their episodes more than half their episodes done that's just about like the walking dead finale they just have to go in and add the sound and add the recordings and music on all that Mm, all that post-production stuff they gotta do. Which everyone says they wait three weeks before the actual episode airs, which, why don't they just get it done when they get the filming done? Well, you do that for a couple of reasons. You want people to kind of crave it a little bit, so um, it's just a tease, and that's, you know, it's to keep you on the edge of your seat, as opposed to, hey, we're just gonna put it out here because we know there's nothing else out here. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes you leave, you know, you, you create, you give a, build up some momentum for it, that's all. So people want it, and then, you know, you spring it on them, and then, hey, maybe you can spring something else on them in addition to it. just depends on, you know, the filmmaker or the network, if it's a TV show, how they want to kind of do it. Um, so you kind of, kind of, maybe want to uh, spread out your content and, as versus just giving it to uh, everyone all at once so it won't be, like, overload or... If it's not that well received, that great. If you give it all to them all at once, where you know you lose fans, but if you kind of hold the hold the ball for a minute, it's a better chance maybe that you know you may get a better fan reception towards it. So we're we're getting to the half hour mark. It seems like we're running out of stuff to talk about. Was there anything you um wanted to promote or anything you wanted to like? Um, I see, man, so I'm just trying to think. I mean, you have your sci-fi. Now, what's your take on, um, like, speaking of sci-fi, like, they're rebooting, rebooting certain shows like The Twilight Zone, which is sci-fi. Oh, I, 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 I saw the first season of that, the Jordan Peele one who did Get Out, and um, the This Is the, the Us the, the Us remake, the, not mm -hmm. the, the, the horror one. Uh, I like that. Yeah. I also watched the original Twilight, so. Okay, okay. So, you, you like the fact that they, he's rebooted it? And made it, like, yeah, more modern, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I gotta check out uh, 
the new Twilights. I, I'm a fan of the older ones. Um, and those storylines, even from back then, are still kind of relevant today. Mm -hmm. I mean, they talk about like racism and uh, the have versus the have nots, and you know, social stuff that still you know it occurred at that time and is still kind of relevant today. So um, some people say, hey, you know, it's a masterpiece. Kind of leave it as its own. Yeah, I, I give you Jordan Peele credit for trying. There's, I respect what he's trying to do. There's, there's going to be like remix of everything in like <laughs> twenty to thirty years from now. Of course, of course. So uh, and that's how that's how this, that's how this works. Is you know uh, something new but something different. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's the pretty like I said, uh, Twilight Zone is a nice little remake. Um, one of my, this is not really sci-fi, um, but it's, um, like real life, well, it's sci-fi in the fact that it's real life, like a lot of science fiction is based upon actual science. Yeah, yeah. But the TV show, like Unsolved Mysteries, I used to love that show back in the day, it was Robert Stack, it was based upon like real crimes and stuff like that, that happened, and it was just like a, you know, a show of, you know, updates and what really happened, a, a, a crime I've heard. Uh, what about Mystery Science Theater Three? Yeah, that I think that isn't that a sci-fi too. Yeah, like Mystery Science Theater, um, stuff like that. I think um, there's again, it, there's definitely an audience for that type of thing. It's not, and it's not just one type of sci-fi, which is kind of awesome because you can have so much that you can kind of branch off into things like that. Um, but it's all based upon actual factual information, which is pretty cool. Which is um, sci-fi is great. It can be a drama. It can be a thriller. It can be a horror. Right, right, right. So uh, even throwing a little comedy in there, it's kind of harder to do. But yeah, sure. <laughs> like in um, in uh, Contact, um, where the one character at the end was like, "Hey, uh, nice to smell you again, sir." <laughs> I forgot. Uh, when he was talking to James Woods, James Woods' character was standing there, and the guy who was on the TV show, Mom, I forgot his character yeah, yeah, name yeah. of the movie, he was blind, and he walked by him, and he's like, that's nice smell you again. So, you know, it's a nice little <laughs> two-second joke. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, sci-fi is awesome. Um, I think uh, it's something that's not going anywhere. As long as you have just science and, you know, what naturally occurs in the universe, you always have content. I mean, that's where this stuff kind of comes from, too. Um, I think it's also important to point out that a lot of your sci-fi people write the scripts, but um, a lot of it comes from books, like books that have been written about, you know, the supernatural or astronomy or again oceanography or whatever. Uh, Sixty over sixty percent of your movies nowadays come from books, mm -hmm. and a lot of them, you know, it, it, the content is there. So, but yeah, especially for sci-fi, but other genres too. I mean. The, you have a fictional tale and people make it into a movie. That happens a lot um, with other kind of genres. So, yeah, it's, it's awesome. How life imitates art and art imitates life is pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, you said that the yeah, last podcast, I believe. Oh, yeah, I think I did. I think I did. So, <laughs> but it's still kind of always true. <laughs> yep, I yep, think yep. that can apply to all like film types. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are those that just come up with stuff, like, off the top of their head, you know, obviously, but, you know, you can always get an inspiration or find something interesting where you want to try to make it into, you know, a book. Oh, uh, excuse me, make it into a movie from a book. Mm -hmm. so. so, speaking of sci-fi, this just popped in my head. Uh, for The mm -hmm. Walk Walking Dead, Robert Kirkman just said that the zombies were made by aliens. <laughs> so he, now, he hasn't officially said that. He just said that to like a bunch of media people to say why it was made. They haven't okay. officially said it on the show or like the comics. I'm, I'm just saying these are what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the zombies are made by aliens, or the, they're basically aliens. And they're you know, some kind of sub sub category of aliens. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. Um, that, that's hilarious. But The Walking Dead, um, and, and I never learned so much about it until I came in contact with the sheriff, all the intricacies. I, I don't think anybody's learned so much about it until they come in contact with me. So you, you, you yeah, you uh, have to uh, some way, somehow, you know, establish or continue to establish your credits on social media with your Walking Dead knowledge, and congratulations on 
reaching your milestone of subscriptions there, sir, on YouTube. That, that, so. Thank you. It just happened this like following week, this last, this last following week. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So you just build upon that knowledge um, and that fan base. Cause, I mean, you're growing one literally as we speak, which is totally awesome, man. <laughs> that's totally great. Thank so. You. That's, that's how things work nowadays with social media. You can, you know, get your own audience, get your own following, and, you know, make the most of it. So, but uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I've never learned so much about just uh, the intricacies of the show, and I never knew so much to know of such intricacies of a show until I met the sheriff. Uh, <laughs> you can do so much with zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just the, the obsession, the love, the passion. Um, as if The Walking Dead was your own child and you give a birth to it. You have its own birth certificate or something. That's how you take to it, which is pretty cool. Like, like, to, like, <laughs> like take, take, move over Robert Kirkman, the show's mine. Ah, yeah, you need to come on as a creative consultant of some sort. <laughs> <sir. laughs> you need to find out who his agents, who his people are. And, and literally, you can throw your line in the water in terms of, you know, you're a fan of the show and, you know, there's a way you can do that. You can maybe write a spec script of an episode or something, <laughs> and then you submit it through the proper channels, and maybe he'll buy you. You never know. Mm -hmm. That's part of filmmaking, man. That's part of filmmaking, just putting yourself out there, trying different things. You never know. There's no one way of success to get put on. <laughs> wait for someone to put you on. You put yourself on the, onto the business. Exactly. You don't wait for you wait for someone else, and that's never going to happen. Mm, that is correct. That is correct. But yeah, I, I, you know, that's something you can mention, the fact that your YouTube channel is growing. And I'm sure if they were to, you know, come across your information, if you did go through the proper channels and contact them, they would check out your social media footprint and see what you got going on. Mm -hmm. So, see how credible you are. <laughs> that's like a new way of building credibility is your social media footprint. <laughs> so, so, good, bad, and different. This is pretty cool, I think. So it's a very inexpensive one, you know, route to, route to go. Yep. Um, Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm trying to think, man. Just We talked sci-fi. We talked yeah, we just talked so pretty much everything on the list. We're about to hit, reach the 40-minute mark. Yeah, so. Um, it doesn't have we, to be exactly an hour, like I said. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, whatever you want to talk about, man. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think whatever else is relevant. Um, now, I think another thing, too, that's very interesting, and this is proof positive that, again, there's a niche of sci-fi for everyone. Mm -hmm. Now you have, like, the sci-fi channel. You have the comment channel. You have channels devoted towards sci-fi yeah. uh, or comedy, you know, which are, are really kind of taken off, and um, people can kind of pick and choose what they want to watch and things like that. But that whole buzz still kind of permeates, especially with social media, because those kind of niches can be easily identified because people tweet, um, Facebook, you know, Instagram about them and stuff like that. So, and meme about them. <laughs> Can't forget about the memes. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome how things work out. The technology that we have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So, it was something else I wanted to mention in regards to sci-fi. Um, so, uh, I lost my train of thought, but it, it'll come to me. Okay. So, I'm just trying to think of what are the bases we can also cover and talk about, if you're interested. Alright, um, that, that, we cover pretty much everything, I, I think. Okay, 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 well, man, it's always a pleasure talking to the sheriff on time with the sheriff. Before we ended it, did you want to, like, promote anything, say... Anything? Uh, I just want to say, man, James, I'm so proud of you. I'm happy for your success. I wish you much, much more success in terms of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, from my end, I, I will try and assist the best way I can, when I can. Um, you know, and it's, you never stop learning. Never stop. Um, if you got an idea, don't think it's crazy. Um, just, you know, try it and put it out there. Don't be afraid to fail. That's the biggest thing. Um, I, you know, this is my kind of advice for you and stuff. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not, you know, saying this like I'm leaving you or anything. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. You know, just kind of advice, you know, stuff like that. Um, I think that really what kind of separates those that have stuff, that content that is out there versus those that don't. 
they're not afraid to fail. Um, they keep it moving. They write all the time or try different things all the time. Um, I think also, too, what will kind of help you out is just look at other genres that you're not used to. You might have heard me say this in class before, but you want to watch stuff that you're not really your cup of tea, per se, but you never know what they... That's, that's what I've, I've been still doing that. That's why I have the, 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 the bad movie reviews that I do. <laughs> right, right, right. See, there you go. So, the bad movie review and stuff like that, and spark a debate. Um, but yeah, you, you branch out and watch other things. Um, I encourage that a lot. You got to watch a lot of bad movies to be, you know, a good filmmaker. And know what's going on around these parts. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. Proud of you. Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess that's uh, pretty much it. All right. Uh, I'm gonna end the podcast. Do you want me just to, like take speaker off and then I'll end it and. Okay. All right. That's cool. All right. I'll be right back. All right. All right, so that was the end of this podcast. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what you've been seeing, like and subscribe. It's James saying, peace. Right, um, I just want to shout out an amazing channel, uh, James the Sheriff Dixon. Oh, he's such a great guy, and he is super cool for coming to the shop. I'm glad I got to meet him in person, and you should subscribe.